Okay, we're at lesson 10.2, and we're going to actually start fitting um, linear models to data. And namely, um, we're going to start trying to figure out which line of best fit is the best line of best fit, right? So far, when we were calculating the line of best fit, um, I've been mentioning that your answer might look different from mine, but there is a way to check to see whose line um, is, is better, uh, or is a better line of best fit to the data. And um, what we're basically going to do, I'm going to let you read this section, uh, the explore section on your own, just like I always do, just to save time. Um, but the, ba ba the the steps are right here, right, uh, of how to do it. Um, but without, you know, just rereading everything to you that you can read on your own, the idea is if you have a data set like you do right here, and in this case we're comparing years or the age in years to actual height in inches, um, depending on what your line is, in this case somebody, uh, Sarah, has her equation here, you have to do what's called, uh, calculate what's called a residual. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the data from your line and compare it to the actual um, height in inches. So in this case, you're, so you're subtracting. So 30 minus 31 gives you a negative 1. And then you're going to square that to get the square of the residual. Now, after all this is said and done, you're going to have a whole bunch of these squared residuals. And if you add it, you come up with a number. And whosever number is smaller. So in this case, um, we're comparing Sarah's uh, equation, line of best, Sarah's equation of the line of best fit to Andrew's equation, line of best fit. Uh, if we add up all those squared residuals, whoever has a smaller um, uh, square of residuals, that's whose line is better in terms of uh, the best line of best fit. So, man, that sounds so confusing, but follow along with me on the next page where we actually just get into the, to the data here. So, in this case, we have two uh, possible lines of best fit here. We are not even given a context in the situation. But it looks like one person said this is uh, a possible line of best fit, and this person said uh, another possible line of best fit. You'll see, you'll notice immediately that they both have the same slope, just different intercepts. Okay, so we want to know which one is better. Okay, so um, when we're comparing this, we're gonna go ahead and plug these in from the the data that's right here. So I'm just gonna copy it directly: one, two, three, four, and then it was five, four, six, and ten. Five, four. 6 and 10 and the same thing is true for the other one 1 2 3 4 5 4 6 and 10 and maybe we should change colors just so we we have a nice thing here so <coughs> the predicted y values um, so how to find the predicted y values well we're going to plug in um, we're going to plug in the x values into this uh, line of fit for a so when x is 1 and you plug it in there. Um, for and again, I'm getting the one from right here. Um, two times one is two. Two plus three is five. So I also get a five here for um, the predicted y for this specific equation. Okay, and uh, I pretty much do the same for the rest of these. I plug in. Um, I plug in x for two. Two times two is four. Four plus three is seven. And if I do that for the rest of them, I should get 9 and 11 as the answers to those. And then what I'm going to do is just find the, resi find the residuals by subtracting um, uh, the predicted y from the actual y. So 5 minus 5 gives us 0. And the square of that residual, 0 squared, is 0. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. And if we square negative 3, we get 9. 6 minus 9 is negative 3. And if we square that, we get 9. And again... Lastly, 10 minus 11 gives us negative 1, and if we square that, we get 1. And then um, or we'll do the same thing for uh, the line of fit for B. Um, and so we're going to plug in the predicted Y. So when X is 1, or let's, let's make this blue, actually. When X is 1, and we're going to plug that X in there, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 2.5 is 4.5. Okay. Then uh, if you do that for the rest of them, you should get 6.5, 8.5, and 10.5.
and we're going to subtract the actual y's and the predicted y's. 5 minus 4.5 is 0 0.5, which if we square, um, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 should give us uh, 0 0.25. Um, and then on to the next one. 4 minus 6.5 gives us negative 2.5, which if we square, you should get 6.25. 6 minus 8.5 gives me negative 2.5 again, which also is 6.25. And lastly, 10 minus 10.5 gives us um, negative 0 0.5, which if we square, we get uh, 0 0.25. Okay, and then step two is we're going to compare the sum of the residuals. So I'm going to add, oops, let's make the screen. I'm going to add these numbers, and then I'm going to add these numbers. And whichever one is smallest is is the better line of best fit. So let's add the green ones together. 9 plus 9 plus 1 gives us 19. And then uh, if we add the other ones, this one I'm probably going to need a calculator. Uh, 0 0.25 plus 6.25 plus, oops, 0.25 plus 6.25 plus 6.25 plus 0 0.25 equals 13. And so which one is smaller? Well, this one is clearly smaller. So we would say um, uh, line B is the better fit. Okay, so that was that section. The next section is kind of fun on page 49. We're actually going to use Desmos to perform what's called a linear regression because you can actually um, use um, Desmos to calculate that line of S for you or the, the best line of best fit for you. So um, if you go ahead and click on this link here, and if you don't know how to do that, uh, if you're on a computer where you can't just tap on the screen, if you go to um, this website right here at uh, bit.ly slash l for l math, um, you should be able to get to the linear regression tool that way. And if you do that, let me, let me jump over. I've done the hard work for you. I, I've taken all the data points that are on page 48 where we're comparing um, the latitude of each city to the average temperature and I've um, plugged those data sets in for you uh, and you can see the x values are 71.2 62.1 so on and so forth all copied over from page 48 of, of the credit um, you'll see that it, um, not only do you get the graph on the right but it also creates a line for you that comes from what we see over here on the left uh, in that purple section and we see a bunch of information here like statistics residuals and all that stuff and that residuals one is, is the thing that we just did where we um, see how far each point is from the best from the line of best fit so if you actually tap on that residuals button you're going to get a whole new column uh, with red points there that show the residuals okay so we're going to use this data to answer the questions on page 49. Okay, so that first question right here on question number two, it looks like, what is the value of the correlation coefficient? Well, if we jump back over to Desmos, the correlation coefficient, um, if we go up here, um, let's see, is that R number on the left in the statistics column under R squared, we should see a negative 0 0.9478. So that is our correlation uh, coefficient here. here. Zero, uh, I'm going to say 95. We're just going to round up to negative 0 0.95. What kind of correlation does it have? It's a negative one, clearly. Um, and question number three, use the linear regression to, to figure uh, to the regression line equation. So uh, M and B, so if we look back over at the Desmos um, page here, we should be able to find M and B right there under parameters. So M uh, is going to be negative uh, 0 0.69286. So let's just say negative 0 0.7, and then 39 for, for the, for the y-intercept there. So we'll jump back here. And so uh, we'll say negative 0 0.7 and 39 to be the M and the B there, and if we write that equation, it's just going to be negative 0.7x plus 39. And then um, we have that graph we created on the right-hand side there. And then um, we want to know um, uh, to see the average temperature for Vancouver, Canada when it's 49.1. So if you actually jump back over, right, 
at 49.1. Let me see, where's the 49.1? This is. Do, 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 do. Is it this one right here? No, that's a 53, 40. Okay, there we go. So we'll see if we tap on um, this particular one right here. Uh, 49, 41.9. We're at. Um, oh, no, that's not what we're on. We're on 49.1. Where's the 49.1? Let's see. Did we have a 49.1? No, oh, we didn't. Um, let's see. Oh, it was on. It was over here. 49.1. We didn't actually finish the table here. So, um, based on the equation here, we have to figure out what 49.1 is. And if you, let's see, if we punch it into the equation there. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 49.1 into here, right? So when x is 49.1, what is y, right? So let's let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, y equals negative 0 0.7 times 49.1 plus 39. And this is just a matter of just uh, punching into the calculator here. 0.7, negative 0.7 times 49.1 plus 39. So we should get, let me see, let me try that again. Um, times 49.1 plus 39 we should get 4.63 so um, let's see 4.63 right that happened that should be um, a good estimate right for that and, and again if we go to Desmos what we could do is if we if we just keep going down the line if we just tap on the line we can get to 49.1 and estimate it right 49.1 and it, it you do have to kind of finesse it a little bit we're at 49.1 it comes out with a 5.094 right um, but close enough anything between any, anywhere between four and a half and five should be a good good estimate there